In this demonstration, you're going to learn how to use the labeling tab in ArcGIS Pro uh, to define some labels for a feature layer. All right, so in this particular um, example, uh, we got a, a pretty simple project here with just uh, one layer plus the base map layer. So the parcel layer is what we're focusing in on just to kind of th keep things simple. Of course, as soon as you select the parcels layer, the feature layer context menu uh, becomes enabled and that includes the appearance tab, labeling tab, data tab. Uh, if I click on the labeling tab, that will bring me to the ribbon that includes buttons and tools for allowing me to uh, define uh, various aspects of my labeling. So on the left hand side is uh, the button called enable labeling. This is just a toggle button that allows you to turn labels on and off. If you have a gray background, they're turned off. Uh, if you click it to turn it blue, then you're turning labels on. Labels are drawn dynamically. And so in this case, we are drawing labels based on content found in the owner name field. You can always change that just by clicking the drop down list. Uh, by default, every feature layer is assigned a, uh, a class, a label class uh, called class one, which is what we see here. These label classes allow you to de uh, define unique labeling properties uh, for a layer um, across multiple classes. So the default class is class one, but that, you know, you can create multiple classes and each class can do something a little bit different uh, in terms of, of uh, labeling properties, right? So that you may want to define labels one way when you're zoomed in further and then define them a totally different way when they're zoomed out. So label classes give you the ability to define different characteristics for your labels at different, uh, you know, different times, right? Whatever those times may be. Uh, moving on to the right, uh, this button just to the right hand side of the field that you select is the expression button. When you click this, uh, it will bring up uh, the label class uh, properties pane and uh, it's going to default to arcade, right? But uh, what this allows you to do is it allows you to define more complex uh, label expressions. Right? The default is just to pull content from one field, but if you find yourself in a situation where you need a more complex labeling, uh, expression. You can do that uh, by using this label class pane. RK is going to be the default language, but you can use other languages as well. And so this allows you to define uh, more complex label names through the RK programming language. Uh, that's kind of beyond the scope of this course. So I'm not going to go into it here. Um, but you do have the ability to use the RK programming language to define something more complex than just one field. So in other words, you might define the owner name and the uh, the market value for your parcels and put them on separate lines. Right? That's possible through Arcade. <clears throat> a lot of different things that are possible through Arcade, um, through that Arcade programming language. So uh, the SQL button at the top allows you to uh, set the SQL query for the current label class. What you're doing here is you're defining uh, a SQL query and then features that match that SQL query will be included in the labeling. If the feature does not match the SQL query, then it's not included in the labeling. So this provides you with a way of uh, filtering out um, the features that will be labeled. Right? Uh, labeling is a, a fairly intensive process. Right? Each time you zoom in, zoom out, pan, change the spatial extent in some way, those labels have to be redrawn and they're redrawn dynamically. So. Um, so it's a fairly expensive operation and so you, you want to try to, if possible, you want to try to limit the features that are going to be labeled and one way you can do that is by defining a SQL uh, WHERE clause. Moving to the right then we have our visibility range. This allows you to define uh, map scale ranges. So for example if I set this from the in beyond at 5,000, the out beyond at 24,000, what you're effectively doing here is you're ensuring that labels are only going to be drawn uh, between those two values. All right? You could also set one or the other. Right? So what this is doing is it's, it's ensuring that when your map scale is in beyond 1 to 5,000 that labels are not drawn. Right? And right now my map scale is at 1 to 2,841. So because that value is below 1 to 5,000 I'm turning my labels off. Now as I zoom out a little further then labels begin to be drawn. Right? You can see how it's spinning here. Uh, now this is an example of that dynamic nature of drawing those those labels. So you can see I kind of took a little bit of time there uh, to draw those labels in. All right, so you can also set out beyond. So if you set something like out beyond to one to 24,000, then you're defining a range. So in other words, I'm only gonna display labels in between maps, when the map scale is in between these ranges. So if it's lower or higher, 
uh, then we are not going to, you know, we're not going to label the uh, the features. This is something that you'll use quite frequently with labeling. Uh, labeling, um, in addition to being uh, a fairly intensive operation, it, it can result in significant delays in your features and labels being drawn. And so you really only want to label when you when you really need to, right? You don't want to label when you're zoomed too far out um, in a lot of cases because it just clutters up your display. Uh, under the text symbol section, you have the ability to define how you want that text to be uh, drawn. So you've got a gallery here of uh, various text options that you can use uh, to draw your text symbol, different fonts, different font options here, font size, font color, all that's pretty straightforward. And then under label placement, you have the ability to define how labels should be placed, right? And this is a land parcel, so we might select land parcel, which you know, it's pretty much the same thing as we had before. These are just different ways of defining how you want those labels to be drawn in relation to the underlying uh, polygon. These will change, these options change depending upon the feature type that you're dealing with. Right, right now we're dealing with a polygon, but if you're dealing with a line or a point, you would get uh, different options uh, for placement uh, based upon the underlying data type. There's a few other options here to the right hand side. Uh, you can pause the drawing of your labeling this comes in handy for situations where you don't necessarily want to wait for those labels to be drawn, right? Because it is such an intensive operation. Sometimes rather than just waiting for all those labels to draw, you might just want to pause it so you can kind of get on with doing other things that you need to do. Uh, you can lock as well. Uh, this allows you to uh, lock, lock, lock your labels. Uh, you can view unplaced labels, right? Uh, not every feature is going to have a label that's drawn for it, right? In this case they are, but as you start to zoom out further, when you start to get conflict between the features, at some point there are some labels that are not gonna be drawn, right? So you can see in this particular case, we've got a label that's not been drawn. Um, that's gonna be the case uh, at times. And uh, so if you click on view unplaced, what that will do is it'll allow you to view any labels that were not initially placed, such as what we have here. It'll be in a different color, but uh, it just kinda allows you to, to view any unplaced uh, labels. And the reason that labels are unplaced is that there's some sort of conflict uh, between uh, labels from one feature to another uh, or, uh, and you can kind of see this, a little hard to tell here, but uh, the the features or the labels should be drawn inside the feature, right? So as they start to extend beyond the feature, as you can see down here at the bottom, then those are typically not placed as labels uh, by default. And there's other options here as well, right? Uh, in a lot of these you're probably not going to use very often, but uh, you do have the ability to set priorities and weights and define abbreviation dictionaries, which can be handy for situations where you're labeling things like streets and you may want to take the, the suffix of a street and uh, distill that down into an abbreviation. So a number of different options there. Uh, there's other labeling options that you control through the contents pane as well um, by going to list by labeling. It allows you to turn labels on and off for a particular class. Now, if I'd had multiple classes here, they would be listed and that would be a very quick way of turning labels on and off uh, that have different characteristics. All right, that's all I wanted to cover for now. Appreciate you joining me and we'll see you next time.